Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee, and uh, the nor'easter is easing, although we're still getting some gusty winds uh, over the south shore of Long Island and uh, parts of uh, southern New England, but, but nothing crazy. Gusts are in the uh, uh, mid-20s to mid-30s. We had some uh, pretty strong winds over Long Island last night. Uh, there were some gusts uh, up. Uh, the wind started cranking up again as the uh, uh, nor'easter uh, was... Uh, the low was starting to move up the coast. We had this large area of rain with some embedded, what looked like some embedded uh, thunderstorms in there. Uh, the thunderstorms didn't hold together, but the heavy rain did as it sweeped northward. So there were some pretty strong gusts of wind. Uh, the parts of Long Island getting 50 to 65 mile an hour winds out of this. So, you know, I, I thought this would be a moderate nor'easter overall when you looked at the entire area. We still have some residual uh, coastal flood warnings up uh, this morning during the morning high tide cycle, so they'll probably come down later on today, I think. And we have winter weather advisories still up for areas north and northwest. There was actually a considerable amount of sleet uh, that uh, fell in some places, accumulating up to several inches in some elevated areas from northwest New Jersey through the Hudson Valley and uh, into uh, western and northwestern Connecticut. It even extended down pretty far south into Fairfield County, which was a little odd it, it, that uh, cold air aloft that cold boundary layer just kind of made it uh, pretty far to the south so it was pretty interesting how it all played out meanwhile i just want to show you on on the satellite what's going on we have the uh, upper air storm now east of the virginia coast and you can see the rotation here so that's what we're dealing with today we're still getting uh, that tropical feed of moisture that is now going up into eastern new england but we're going to be dealing with this upper low and some bands of rain that are going to be developing uh, during the day before the whole thing pulls out to the north and east, uh, which it's going to do. And uh, we uh, do see drier air out to the west, so that bodes well for Wednesday at least. And here's the look on the radar, and there are the bands off the ocean. You can see the radar echoes rotating in a counterclockwise fashion. The Oh, the the, he the uh, heavy moisture, the, the, the moisture that produced the rain, uh, which was, by the way, on the order of about an inch and a half to three inches in most places, which is really good because that helps cut into the drought. Um, the solid area of precipitation is now up into Maine, northern New Hampshire, and through upstate New York, north of I-90, which is some residual moisture back out to the west and into western Pennsylvania. So um, not bad. I mean, I've been through worse with nor'easters. This was, like, as I said, I thought it would be moderate in nature. Maybe in a few pockets you might consider it strong. Um, I, I didn't think it was going to be an off-the-wall off event uh, overall. Now here's the NAM model uh, for today, the new one. And, you know, showing uh, some uh, more rain into this evening. Maybe another quarter to a half an inch in some places. I wouldn't be surprised. And then the low pulls away. Finally, we get into some drier air. And we do have a weather front that's coming through for Thursday with a couple of showers. Uh, that's going to start the process of bringing some colder air down over the uh, Friday uh, for, for Friday and through uh, this coming weekend. And nothing exceptionally cold. It's just going to be a, a gradual chill down, I believe. Uh, you knock off a few degrees uh, each day, and that's about it. So let's look at the long range, which we haven't really done too much of lately for obvious reasons. And um, I just want to, um, first off, let's make sure I got the right model up, which is the GFS, and we do. So, well, uh, GFS also brings this front through, which is no big surprise. And here we have uh, the weekend, just kind of a gradual chill down as we go into early next week. Now, on Monday, there's going to be a, a bit of a trough that's going to swing into the east. It's going to try and make a little low in southern Virginia. Uh, the model overnight you know, uh, try to generate a little bit of snow in coastal Virginia and into Delaware and southern New Jersey. Uh, we're going to watch this in case it winds up being pinned further west. The models have been having a, um, a habit of doing that in the last minute, and this is seven days into the long range, so I think there's room for error. Uh, it's going to depend on the structure of the uh, upper air. And then after that, if you want to believe the GFS, uh, it, it looks seasonally cold maybe uh, a little bit below normal as we move into uh, days uh, eight nine and ten I'm, I'm not you know too impressed by all this uh, at the moment and it does attempt to try to bring out something very late in the period from the southwest you know now we're getting into squirrel land when we're talking about day 11 and 12 but 
you know, I guess the possibility is there. But we'll uh, first things first. We got to get it cold. Let's uh, look at what's going on uh, in the upper atmosphere. And I'm going to widen this out uh, so we can get the full view because, you know, one of the things in my experience is over the years that you get a weather pattern that sets up for the beginning part of the winter. And then that lasts about four to six weeks. And then you get it to break down for a couple of weeks to do where it goes to something else. And it's like it tries to reload and then it goes back to the original pattern for the second half. Now, I think this period that we've been in for the last uh, week and a half or so, uh, two weeks, has been that, you know, sort of thaw period, uh, that breakdown period. And now we're going to evolve into something. But, you know, it might be a process to get there. And I wonder whether we're going to wind up getting back to that trough in the West idea. But we'll see. Um, here's the, here's what happens with the upper air. And, and, and I want to go back. You know, this is for this weekend where we've got this cold flow established out of Canada. And as we move into uh, Sunday night and Monday, you've got this trough right here. And the question is whether there's room because you, you have another weather system here that's coming into the Pacific Northwest. You know, the jet uh, dives down. And at this stage of the game, when you look at the upper air, I'm thinking, you know, there might be some room here. There's enough spacing in between uh, this system out in the Atlantic and the next trough, and there seems to be enough spacing between that trough and the next weather system up in Western Canada that, you know, maybe something could happen. So uh, as we move it along, it tries to see how it tries to swing that trough in. It just kind of tries to bring it through. But then that system to the north kind of starts to get involved here, and, and you, you don't get that full turn from a northeast southwest trough to a more north south trough you know it just kind of progresses along so if that remains the case then this would not be anything important but i think we have to watch for the fact that you know maybe this system will be a little less deep maybe it'll be a little slower perhaps this will be a little slower and further left i think there's room to, uh, for this uh, to maneuver and this would be you know we're looking at january 30th 31st that system lifts out and you can see the one behind it kind of amplifies it gets, as it gets to the coast and that brings through another weather front you got that flow from canada there you've got this ridge in alaska you have the low uh, that's sitting uh, off the pacific northwest coast so you've got a pretty active split flow here uh, but the question is does it stay that way in the longer term and it does for a while uh, you still have there's, I, you know, I think there's enough when we go into the first week of February, I think there's enough going on in the upper atmosphere to suggest that that maybe something will eventually happen uh, down the road. Um, there, there's there's uh, there's there's too much energy running around. The features are kind of strong with this big blocking high that's up uh, moving itself up uh, into through the Bering Straits. But one of the things I want to caution is that as we go late in the period, now this is just one run, I, you know, it, it, it does this from time to time where it wants to do this. But when we look at this after the first week of February, uh, you start to get this idea that maybe the trough wants to go back in the West and you suddenly that flow from Canada is, is more westerly rather than uh, north northwesterly. So uh, the cold air. Uh, begins to effectively get cut off. Uh, this is, again, a pure speculation uh, on my part. Um, I don't know uh, what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen uh, in the long term. You can only guess. Um, you know, there are people that are bullish with regards to the long term. You know, I don't know. At this stage of the game, I, I think it's pretty well established that this winter is just going to be what it's been so far to me, which is an average winter here in the East with volatility some of the volatility has been extreme when you kind of add all the numbers out it's probably a little bit above normal in terms of temperature snowfall is running even to slightly below normal in some places slightly above normal in others um, there's nothing to me that suggests that it's going to be any different down the road i don't care what long term indices you look at um, you know so far they may be screaming all these things with regards to this incredible winter pattern that's going to develop during the month of February in the eastern part of the United States, you're going to have to prove it to me. You know, I'm not saying it can't happen. It's always possible, but you're going to have to prove it to me. Uh, 
broken clocks are right twice a day. If you say things long enough, eventually it's going to come out the way you want it to. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to criticize anybody specifically, but it's just this is why I like to deal with what's in front of me and not stuff that, you know, I can't get my head around. All right, end of lecture. A dry off from the Nor'easter. We'll uh, have a couple of posts up on the website later today as we look for the long range. Uh, do download my app and subscribe to my forecasts uh, for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, uh, and Eastern Pennsylvania. The app is free. Uh, down, uh, the subscription is just 99 cents a month. And if you've stayed with my video this long, I'm assuming you liked it. So in which case, if you haven't done it already, Hit the subscribe button on my YouTube tube channel, which is absolutely free. The videos are free, always will be free, and you will get notifications anytime a new video goes up. And I appreciate the fact that you uh, subscribe uh, and participate in my channel. I appreciate it greatly. So everybody have a great uh, re rest of your Tuesday. I worked so hard and long last night doing TV on Fios One News that uh, I woke up this morning, I, I could not for the life of me figure out what day of the week it was. So <laughs> I finally figured out that it's Tuesday. Um, so everybody have a great day.